Chemistry is, by no means, a safe branch of science. Before developments of many modern technologies, experiments done to reach breakthroughs in chemistry involved putting one's life at risk. One quest that best exemplified the dangers of chemistry during the latter half of the 1800s was the isolation of fluorine. Fluorine is an extremely dangerous element due to its electronegativity, or tendency to attract electrons. The element has only two electron shells, meaning there aren't many electrons separating the nucleus from the outside of a fluorine atom. On top of this, fluorine is the largest of the elements with two electron shells and also is missing a valence electron. Since fluorine needs one electron to stabilize and doesn't have much to protect the outside world from its positively charged nucleus, fluorine can easily rip electrons from other atoms. This was evident in chemical experiments as several setups corroded in attempts to isolate the poisonous gas, and many chemists suffered health problems or even died while seeking glory in this first isolation of the elusive element. But one French chemist brought an early new idea to the table that changed the game and allowed fluorine to be isolated for the very first time. Born in Paris in 1852, Henri Morsan grew a keen passion for chemistry at the age of 12 when his family moved to a nearby town by the name of Meaux. His chemistry teacher fueled his passion, but school wasn't Morsan's fate in his early life. Due to France's war with Prussia, his family moved back to Paris before he was able to finish school and he spent a year in the French army. After the war, he tried his hand working at pharmaceutical companies but left those jobs in pursuit of experimental inorganic chemistry. He did, however, meet his wife from working in pharmaceuticals. She was the daughter of one of the wealthy pharmacists he worked for. With money out of the question, Wasson could spend his time pursuing an education and devoting his life to inorganic chemistry. He worked his way through the ranks of the School of Pharmacy in Paris, and by 1886 was professor of toxicology there. It was during this time that he underwent his groundbreaking work with fluorine. The main method many scientists used to isolate fluorine at the time was electrolysis of fluorine salts, which meant that the salts had to be melted down at extremely high temperatures to allow the compounds to break down and conduct electricity. However, due to fluorine's nature, this often corroded the vessels in which the attempts were made. Mossan had an ingenious approach to this process, however. He proposed the idea of electrolysis at cold temperatures. Instead of melting fluorine salts, he condensed hydrogen fluoride, a compound that is a gas at room temperature, and attempted to electrolyze that instead. Still, fluorine was very tricky because of how it corroded the equipment when it was isolated, so there were many failed attempts by Mossan, one for each time a part failed on him. He continued to improve his setup methodically, replacing the anode stoppers with calcium fluoride and using cathodes and anodes made of irradiated platinum. When the vessel was perfected, he ran into another problem. He found that the hydrogen fluoride was actually not conductive enough for electrolysis. So, Mossan added another stroke of genius to his experiment. He added a salt to the solution to improve the conductivity, that salt being potassium bifluoride. At that point, the fluorine gas came steaming out of this new solution. Fluorine, for the first time, had been successfully isolated. Over the next few years, Mossan turned his attention to diamond synthesis. He was a vital figure in this department as well, for he theorized that melted iron could dissolve carbon, and given enough heat and pressure, the carbon could crystallize. He even attempted to prove his theory, developing an electric arc furnace capable of reaching 3000 to 3500 degrees Celsius in 1892. While microscopic diamonds were found in Mossan's furnace after some tests, it was later discovered that one of his lab assistants planted them in the furnace because he wanted to see Mossan succeed. Although he never successfully synthesized diamonds, he played a pivotal role in determining how it could be possibly done in the future. Mossan won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1906 for essentially his two greatest career achievements. In recognition of the great services rendered by him in his investigation and isolation of the element fluorine, and for the adoption in the service of science of the electric furnace called after him. Although it is unconfirmed, there is speculation that his work with fluorine led to health problems later in his life and contributed to his sudden death in 1907 at the age of only 54. Mossan, like many chemists before him, put his life on the line for his passion and for the sake of scientific progress, but unlike many before him, his ingenious ideas led to significant advancements in the field of chemistry. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Click here if you want to see more scientific advancements made during this time period. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.